Thank you so very much for joining us here today at Church Learn Rock. I know that God has something incredible planned for you throughout this message. If this is your first time tuning into our podcast, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. That's our website. On there, you will find anything and everything you need to know about us. Now, before we jump into this, let me pray that God has a specific word for you. I just feel like this is such an important message and series that we're going to be diving into today. I'm just going to give you a really brief introduction today, and then we're going to get into it deeper uh, in the next weeks. But we call it Chasing Wisdom. And I think one of the things that really excites me the most about this series is how simple it is. Most good things in the Bible really are. Uh, I've often said the Bible's so simple you have to have help to misinterpret it. You, you get people that will help you misinterpret it. But this is so simple, you'll probably walk out of here, remember the V8 commercial where you said, boom, I could have had a V8, you know? That was so simple. That was, uh, it, it's, it's simple and yet it's profound. Um, you, ever, you ever looked at, at an invention I don't know if you do this. I do this all the time. I'll see these inventions, these things come out on television and think, gosh, why didn't I think of that? You ever do that? That's the neatest thing in the world. Yeah, I, I, I should have thought of that. I wish I had invented that. I mean, little silly things, you know, but I saw one the other day I thought was really cool. Now, I don't know if they still do this or not, but back in the day when I was a baby, checking a baby's temperature can be kind of tough, you know? You can't really hold it under their tongue or you might try under their arm and get that. If all else fails, though, you know, you know where it goes, right? I don't need to say any more. So it's kind of tough. Well, I saw the other day somebody's invented a pacifier with a built-in thermometer. And I thought, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't somebody think of it when I was a baby? Is what I want to know, really. But, you know, it's just simple things. Bill Gaither is a great gospel music writer, and, and probably most of you heard of Bill Gaither. He's written just hundreds or thousands of gospel songs. And also, Dottie Rambo is another, was another. She passed away a couple of years ago in a bus accident. But Dottie Rambo wrote uh, so many great old gospel songs. And she wrote one that was just probably one of the most popular old Southern gospel songs ever called We Shall Behold Him. And Bill Gaither told Dottie Rambo one day, he said, you know, if I had been praying and listening to God instead of fishing, God would have gave me that song instead of you. You know, it was a great song. And so sometimes we're fishing maybe when we should be praying or listening. But for these simple things and these simple words, and that's kind of the way that I feel about this. It's so simple. And uh, the second thing that, that excites me about this series is that not only is it simple, but you don't even have to be a believer for it to help you. Now, I hope you are. I hope you're a follower of Jesus Christ. If you're not, I hope that you will become one before this series is over. But the content of this series is so practical and so helpful, it, will, it can change you and bless you even if you're not a Christ follower. Even if you're not, if you'll just get this. And really, that's, that's the story of the book of the Proverbs. And lastly, I'm excited uh, to finally give birth to this series, particularly uh, this morning because I hope and pray that it will have as great of impact on you as it has on me uh, because it's had a tremendous impact on me. I believe that it has the potential to rock your world when it comes to your finances, to your relationships, to your happiness and your joy and your peace, your life in general. Uh, I don't think I've ever taught a series that has as much potential to change your life as this one. And I mean that. So are you ready? Better be good after all that, huh? I'm going to be in trouble if it's not. Proverbs chapter 4. The hardest part of this is trying to figure out where to read from the Proverbs because they're so good. In fact, let me say this. I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. Proverbs has 31 chapters in it. And if my math is correct, then I think if you read one chapter a day, you'll finish up just before the last 
series, the last message in the series. And I want to I want to encourage you to try to do that. Try to read one chapter a day. It'll take you about two to three minutes of your day just to read one chapter. The challenge for that, if you're anything like me, especially in Proverbs, I read Proverbs like you eat potato chips. You know, it's hard to read just one. I mean, I just want to start reading Proverbs and I just want to keep reading because they're incredible life lessons. But I want to encourage you as homework to start in, in the first, very first. L- let me take chase one little rabbit here. Listen to, to the very first chapter. The purpose of these Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand wise sayings. Through these Proverbs, people will receive instruction in discipline, good conduct, doing what is right, just and fair. These Proverbs will make the simple-minded clever. They will give knowledge and purpose to young people. Let those who are wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Let those who are understanding receive guidance by exploring the depth and the meaning of these Proverbs, parables, wise sayings, and riddles. So it tells you right there, this is the purpose of these things, to make you wise, to give you understanding, to make you clever, to take even the simple and make them clever, to make the wise even wiser. So that's the purpose of it. So, but we're going to jump over to chapter four and I want to read through here a little bit. He says in verse one, he says, my children, listen to me, listen to your father's instruction, pay attention and grow wise for I'm giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my teaching. I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved by my mother as an only child. My father told me, take my words to heart. Follow my instructions and you will live. Learn to be wise and develop good judgment. Don't forget or turn away from my words. Don't turn your back on wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Whatever else you do, get good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will exalt you. Embrace her, she will honor you. She'll place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I'll teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. If you live a life guided by wisdom, you won't limp or stumble as you run. Carry out my instructions. Don't forsake them. Guard them, for they will lead you to a fulfilled life. Chasing wisdom. Chasing wisdom. And we're going to kind of the one verse, I guess, if we're going to use as a text for the whole series is verse 7, Proverbs 4, 7. You ought to write this down, put it on your refrigerator, your dashboard, your mirror, wherever you can see it. Learn this. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And whatever else you do, get good judgment. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. If you flip the page back to Proverbs chapter 2, I'll ask this again this morning. I asked Wednesday night because I want to make sure. How many know who wrote the book of Proverbs? Raise your hand. It's not a trick question. Okay, then we need to do this. The book of Proverbs was written by King Solomon. But King Solomon was David's son. David was the greatest king Israel ever had. He, he ruled Israel. He was king of kings. He was, he was king supreme. Solomon was his son who was set to take over as king. God comes to Solomon before he's king, and he says, Solomon, and it's almost like Aladdin's lamp. You know, it's like a magic genie thing. I mean, it's the thing we all dream of when somebody says, I'm going to give you three wishes, or, or I'm going to give you one wish. What do you wish? And God comes to Solomon and says, Solomon, I'm going to give you one wish. What do you want? I'm going to give you something. Oh, man, this is tough because we all have the million dollars. You know, give me a million dollars. Give me, give me this. Give me that. And, and I'm going to give you one thing. And Solomon says to God, God, I've got to take over this kingdom. And if I'm going to rule well as my father has, I need wisdom. 
He said, I can't even come in and go out. I don't, I don't know anything about ruling a kingdom. I need wisdom. And the Bible says that it, that pleased God so much that he didn't ask for money or he didn't ask for long life, but he asked for wisdom. God said, I'm going to make you the wisest man who's ever lived or will ever live. Not only that, but because you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give you wealth and a long life. Just because you made me happy, because you asked for wisdom. And so, that, I mean, that, that, that's awesome because he chose to chase after wisdom instead of stuff. He not only got wisdom, but he got the stuff to boot. And I believe we can also. And I believe if we'll start to chase after wisdom with all of our hearts, our minds, and soul, we're not only going to find great wisdom, but we're going to find secrets to wealth and health and happiness also. Okay, one more passage in, 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 in Proverbs 2. Listen to this. Verse 1, my child, listen to me and treasure my instruction. Turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and understanding. Search for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain the knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of good sense to the godly. He is their shield protecting those who walk with integrity. He guards the path of justice and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. You will know how to find the right course of action every time. Every time. You'll know how to find the right course of action. Okay, there's the introduction. And don't worry, the introduction's about as long as a sermon. So I want to try in this opening se session to bring you to a place where you can begin to feel it and touch it and see that it's tangible, wisdom, that it's something that it's attainable, that it can be yours. And as I've been telling you, I'm going to do this using one question. I'm going to give you three ways to ask this question. If you will learn how to ask this one question, and more importantly, answer this one question, and answer it honestly, truthfully, and heed the answer, the answer to this one question will fix almost every problem you have. One question will change your life? It's a simple question. I could have had a V8. Three little words. Is this wise? Is this the wise thing to do? Three little words. Not can I do it or can I do it. Not is this sin or not. Not is this right or is it wrong? Not can I do this and still go to heaven? Not if I do this, will I go to hell? Not, you know, what all? No, but is this the wise thing to do? Now, let me tell you right off, that's not always an easy question to ask. Not if you're going to be obedient to the answer. And here's the reason why. Because most of the time, we already know the answer to that question. And we just don't want to hear it. We don't want to ask that question. We don't mind saying, can I do this and still go to heaven? Because I can justify it. I, if I do this, it's not going to send me to hell. Do this. And see, I can handle that. It's not wrong for me to do this. I didn't say it was wrong, but is it wise? See, something cannot be wrong and still not be wise. How many of you have ever said, boy, I wish I knew then what I know now? Whoo, if I knew then, maybe concerning your finances or some relationship or your health or your family, if I only knew then what I know now, boy, would I have done things differently. And then you say, yeah, but we have no way of knowing that. We can't know what the future holds. And you're right, but I promise if you will begin to seek wisdom above money, above pleasure and things and stuff, if you'll learn to ask and accept the answer to this one question, is this wise? You're going to save yourself a ton of pain, a world of regrets, 
of looking back and saying, why did I do that? Okay, three ways, real quickly, I'm going to give you to ask this question, and then we're going to be done. The first way to ask it, number one, if you're a note taker, you can write these down, but they're not hard to remember. Given my past history, not yours, mine, given my past history, is this wise? Knowing what I know about me, knowing my history with relationships, knowing my history with addiction, knowing my history with past struggles uh, with lust, knowing, knowing how I've struggled with lust in the past, knowing my history with how I've managed my money. Is this a wise decision for me to make? Should I get into another marriage right now knowing my past history? Should, should I take this drink knowing my past history? May not be perfectly anything wrong with it for you, but knowing my past history, should I? Knowing, knowing how I've handled this, knowing, knowing uh, should I dive off into a huge purchase right now, knowing my history? Should I bring another baby into the world, knowing my past history? With, you see what I'm saying? Looking at my past history, is this, well, not can I or can I, not is it right or wrong, is it wise? Knowing my past. Knowing my present circumstances. Is this wise? Knowing what my income is right now versus my outflow, is this a wise purchase? Knowing my current relationship status, is this wise? Knowing that I'm married, is this wise? Knowing that I'm in a relationship, a committed, is this wise? Knowing my weakness, should I even text this person? Come on, let's get honest. Should I even be Facebook friends with this person knowing my current situation? Should I even call this person? Should I even drive by that way knowing my current situation? Is this wise? Well, there ain't nothing wrong with it. I didn't ask that. I said, is it wise? Is it wise? Lastly, not only knowing my past history, not only knowing my present circumstances, but knowing my future hopes and dreams. Is this wise? Am I really willing to risk my future hopes and dreams? Knowing where I want to be in 10 years, knowing that I hope to retire, knowing, knowing uh, that I, I want and need to get out of debt, knowing that I want to live to see my kids and my grandkids grow up to be old, knowing these things, knowing, knowing that I want to make heaven and miss hell and not just hell for eternity, but hell on earth, knowing my future is this a wise decision to make? Is this the wise thing to do in this situation? And I promise you, believer or not, Christ follower or not, church goer or not, if you begin to apply just this one question, this one principle to your life, this will change your life forever, given my past history, given my present situation, given my future hopes and dreams, is this wise? and you ask it and you answer it honestly, it will change your life. Why is this question so important? Suppose like Solomon, unlike Solomon, let's say you ask for God, God, I just want million dollars. I just want wealth, unlimited wealth. God says, okay, you get unlimited wealth, then tomorrow you die. Well, that did a lot of good, didn't it? Now you left something for your kids to fight over. Well, that was a pretty stupid, wasted wish. What if I ask God for long life then? I'll just ask God, let me live a long time. Well, you're broke. So all you're doing is prolonging the agony and you're living this long, miserable life. So that didn't work. Why not ask God for wisdom so you can handle anything. Look at verse 9, chapter 2. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. You will know how to find the right course of action every time. No matter if I'm rich, if I'm poor, if I'm sick, if I'm healthy, if I'm here. If I have wisdom, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to know how to make it no matter what comes along. All right. I, want to, I, want to, I was going to close right there, but... 
I'm going to go back because a lot of you wasn't here Wednesday night. I'm going to give you one little bitty recap in Proverbs chapter 9. Then I'll close, I promise. Give me about two, about two or three minutes. Proverbs chapter 9. And I love how Solomon here, he gives wisdom the character of a woman. He's, he calls her she. It's, it's, it's what in English we call anthropomorphism. It means to give a human-like characteristic to a non-human thing. We've, we've done that. We, you know, we had our car, first car called Old Betsy, you, you know, and we name our boats and Rocky Marciano fighter, his right hand, everybody called it old Susie Q. You know, I mean, it's, so we give it these human-like qualities. And the reason I think Solomon does that here is he wants wisdom to not be some vague, ambiguous, fog thing. He wants it to be tangible. He says, this is something you can attain. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can reach it. You can have it. Wisdom is a thing. So he refers to it as a her. Listen in Proverbs chapter 9. Listen as, 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 as wisdom is begging you to come get her. Wisdom has built her spacious house with seven pillars. She's prepared a great banquet mixed with wines and set the table. She sent her service to invite everyone to come. She calls out from the heights overlooking the city. Come home with me, she urges to the simple, to those without good judgment. The simple, you don't have to be smart. You're the simple-minded, those without good judgment, those, those that are simple. She says, come, eat my food, drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your foolish ways behind and begin to live. Learn how to be wise. She's calling out. She's calling out for people to come. But now, there's another woman in the picture. If you skip down to verse 13, it says, this woman's name is folly or foolishness. She's loud and brash. She's ignorant and doesn't, doesn't even know it. Listen, she's going to call. Two women's calling your name. Two people are calling your name. Wisdom's calling you and foolishness is calling you. Here's what foolishness says. She sits in the doorway on the heights overlooking the city. She calls out to men going by who are minding their own business. Come home with me. She urges the simple to those without good judgment. She says, stolen water is refreshing. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. Foolishness. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. Stolen water. That's what's really good. But the men don't realize that her former guests are now in the grave. I don't even have to preach anymore on that. Come on over here. Food eaten in secret is the best food. Nobody's going to know. Stolen waters. Stuff don't belong to you. That's the best. Foolishness is calling your name. And wisdom's over here saying, it doesn't matter if you're smart or, or simple. It doesn't matter. Come here and I will make you wise. You can walk by foolishness and blow it off because that's not wise. That's not wise. I'm not, I'm not even going to walk by her street. I'm not even walking by her apartment. I'm not even going to hear what she has to say because I know what she has to say. When you learn to ask this question and ask it three ways, given my past history, given my present situation, and given my future hopes and dreams, is this wise? This will rock your world. Amen. 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 Next week, we're going to unpack this four stages of wisdom. We're going to be talking about next week, the four stages of wisdom. Come back, bring somebody with you, sign in. It's going to be a great, great series. Again, thank you so very much for checking out our podcast. If you would like to share what God is doing in your life, maybe you have a prayer request or, or just seeking answers, let me encourage you to go to our Facebook or our Twitter or even email us at pray at jesusistherock.org. If you would like to give to our ministries financially, you may easily do so by going to JesusIsTheRock.org and clicking on the giving button at the very right-hand corner of the screen. Have a wonderful day.